should be live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Hump Day Hangouts. Today is the 5th of February, 2020. I'm still working on saying 2020, so that's why I got all slow. No, no, about you guys, but I keep finding myself right in the last year, but uh, I guess that's just the way it goes. So anyways, on to more interesting subjects, like answering your questions and seeing what we can help everyone out with. But before we get into that, I want to say hello to the guys. We've got some short announcements, and then we will jump into it. So uh, starting on my left here, Bradley, how are you doing today? Fantastic, man. I've been recording videos all day for the 2X Your Agency stuff. Uh, man, I can't believe we're selling it for what we're selling it for. <laughs> That's all I got to say. A lot of content, man. Well, we're if you're going to say that, then I'm going to say, go to 2XYourAgency.com. Yeah. I can't that just believe increase the prices, man. We're, we're only three weeks into a 12-week course, man, and uh, it's it's just a massive amount of value. So uh, anyways, I hope you guys take advantage of our stupidity. <laughs> well, what Bradley meant to say was we help digital agency owners get more clients, grow the revenue and scale their teams. All right. So, you know, yeah. two big things that we find important and I know Bradley's joking around, but um, you know, we want to work less and earn more and not that we want to do nothing, but we want to spend our time doing the things we want to do. All right. And that's what this is all about. Um, so we've heard that uh, commonly from a lot of you guys who are listening and then people, other people out there we've talked to, you know, those are the three main things that we can help you do so that you can work less and earn more and spend time doing what you want to do. Yeah. Um, Chris, how you doing, man? Yeah, like I'm suffering like the temperature struggle here. Like um, about 10 days ago, I was in the mountains at minus 17 degrees Celsius. So That's until, well, the whole weekend and until Monday, we had about 19 degrees plus and then on Tuesday, a big storm came, and last night we got about half a meter of snow dumped out, and it's fucking cold again. So um, I'm surprised that I'm healthy and like um, not like having any colds or something like that. But yeah, I don't know. Like other than that, life is good. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of cold, turn on. How you doing? I'm doing awesome, dude. I'm doing awesome. I'm feeling like shit, but here's the deal. Okay, okay. So two, two, two quick things. Stop laughing. It sounds funny, all right? So quick, two quick things. Number one is that thank you guys for the amazing support for the launch of 2X Your Agency. It was awesome. So thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, we're pouring in a lot of value in it, semantic mastery style. We're trying to over-deliver 2XYourAgency.com. That is number one. Number two is that last week, I went to Funnel Hacking Live and I had the honor and the privilege and the pleasure of getting on behalf of the whole Semantic Mastery team, the Two Comma Club Award that we made uh, that we made possible. Thanks to all of you guys. So I'm feeling like crap, but I'm super proud of the team that we have here. And I'm super proud for, you know, uh, and, and, and I just, I, I don't have words to thank you guys. Everyone that's watching the YouTube channel, subscribing, commenting, sharing, you know, buying our products, supporting the brand. It's been quite a ride. And, you know, last year we were sitting with Adam in Nashville, Tennessee, and I was like, dude, I think it would be pretty awesome if we hop on stage together to come a club award. And then lo and behold, we got it. So anyways, I just wanted to say that I'm super proud of that. Super proud of the team. And thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. I was too cool for school to go up there with Hernan. I was hanging out in Puerto Rico for a little while. So I, I had to miss that, but now I'm really glad I didn't go because apparently I would have gotten sick as hell. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I went in, I took a bullet for the team, but also uh, we might have, I, I also got to network with some awesome uh, people, some awesome entrepreneurs. So we might be having them on, on uh, subsequent, uh, subsequent uh, Hamda Hangouts moving forward. So that's going to be a blast too. So Awesome. Good stuff. All right. And Marco, how you doing today? Oh, dude, I'm stuck here under almost 20 inches of sun. It's oh, man, horrible. Not, it's horrible. Like <laughs> I look outside and not a cloud in the sky. 82 degrees. It'll be around 60 at night. It's terrible, I tell you. Don't anybody come here for any of this. You don't want it. You don't want paradise. Trust me. But what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go and record like, like to the new house that I just moved into over there's a, there's a, a green area. And I got two volcanoes in, in, in the background, two just big mountains. So I'm going to go and do a, a quick live stream so you guys can see where it is that Marco lives. Because it doesn't get any better than this, man. 80 degrees in the, during the day, 60, 65 at night. And that, that's life, guys. And, and what we're trying to get you to live 
is that your your po whatever your pofu is it doesn't have to be this. You you could it could be that that you want to go to to to, the, to an Antarctica, and, and set up camp there. I mean, you you're more than welcome. If that's your pofu, we're with you, and we'll we'll help you get there. That that that's that's our whole point right behind all this, the two extra agency and all of the products and services that we provide is so that people can get to the point where they can say, I'm going to do what I want to do rather than what I have to do to, 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 to see how the, how the hell I'm gonna make it to the end of the month, I'm gonna pay my bills. We don't want you living that life. We want you living a life where you work less and you make more money and then you can do whatever the fuck you want with your money. And I'll leave it at that. Fair enough. Well, I don't have too much to add on to that except to say, let's see. Nice and sunny. It's nice to be back home. I enjoy traveling a lot, but um, I don't know about you guys. I enjoy getting back into the routine as well. Um, having the flow, you know, kind of getting out, starting my day, having that after a week or two on the road to start getting kind of tired and like, okay, I'm ready to get back to it. I know I see Bradley shaking his head. You feel the same, right? Oh my God, dude. There's so much freedom in routine. I swear yeah. to God, like, I, I don't know how you guys, how Hernan and you and Chris do it. Cause you trap the three of you travel so much and work and I, I just can't do it. I can't get motivated when I'm away from my work environment. Um, it's very difficult to stay focused for me when I'm outside of this environment. And so, uh, you know, like I said, to me, I'm I, like, I feel so out of sorts, even taking a vacation, you know, coming back and getting back into my normal routine is like liberating, <laughs> you know? So I don't know. I get stressed out when I'm, when I'm on the road, um, you know, when it comes to work stuff. So, but I also see Bradley not being stressed out on the road and that's at Pofu live. If you want to see Bradley unchained, uh, and hit him up for some good off, uh, off the record info, you need to come to Pofu live. Uh, We've locked down. We are going to be in Boston this year in 2020. It's going to be, I don't, I forget the exact dates, but I believe it's the last weekend in September. Uh, and so now is the time uh, to go ahead and lock in your tickets. We're limiting it to 25 people this year. Uh, so if you go to pofulive.com, you can grab your ticket early. So um, that said, got a couple more announcements I want to share with everyone. You heard us talking about uh, double your agency. Uh, if you're new to us or you're new to Semantic Mastery, um, then, you know, there's two great places you can get started with us. You've already found the first one uh, and that's something to hang out, show up every Wednesday. If you can't make it live, you can always ask the question on the page and then check out our YouTube uh, channel for the answers. So go ahead and hit subscribe on the YouTube channel, stay up to date with all of that. But like I said, we help digital agency owners and consultants get more clients, right? Grow their revenue and scale their teams. All right. So that you can work less and earn more. If you want to know more about that, just go to 2xyouragency.com. All right. And then additionally, a lot of people ask us, you know, hey, you guys have a step by step process for maybe working with age domains or how about a new website or how do I YouTube channels or how do I do GMB stuff? Go check out the battle plan. If you don't have the battle plan yet, you can find that at battleplan.semanticmastery.com. And last but certainly not least, if you're doing uh, done for you services or you're working on your own projects or you're working with clients, uh, you need to be checking out mgyb.co, right? Stuff like link building. Uh, the SEO shield, which if you don't know what that is, head over there, find out. Uh, press releases, there's more services coming. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Um, but make sure that uh, you head over there and you're putting that to use. And that falls into line with what we're teaching at 2xyouragency.com, uh, you know, as part of the fulfillment and getting yourself out of the fulfillment role and really and truly trying to run the business. So with that Sweet. said, you guys, is there any other announcements before we dive into the questions? Ah, uh, let's do this, man. You good? All right, let me grab the screen. Stand by. Should be good. Can you confirm? Good to go. Okay. So looks like Justin is up first. He says for the RYS drive stack, he's been real uh, active in the Facebook community too. So um, pretty cool. I love it when people come in and, and, you know, are active and engaged because that's how you get, uh, that's how you start to grow, right? Um, so that's awesome, Justin. He says, for the RYS drive stacks, for the middle option with the old slash new Google sites, is that referring to classic? So you must be talking about when you order from MGYB. He's asking, is that referring to classic slash new versions of G sites, both newly created or an aged site as well as a newly created site? That's the versions. They're both going to be new. Uh, but we're talking about classic plus classic Google sites plus the new Google sites. Um, Marco was talking about new Google sites just yesterday with us. Uh, yeah, shh, shh. that's all I'm going to say then. <laughs> but there's a, so, so it's both, it's, it's, it's both, in, both new sites, but one is on the newer platform um, 
and the old, and then the, the, the other site is on the, the old Google sites. So it's not about aged and new sites, if that makes sense. Um, last part of that is how does the Twitter account for an extra hundred bucks integrate? Thanks. And Marco, I'll let you take that one. Uh, that gets tied to your branded Twitter account. So it becomes a secondary Twitter account, which tweets, uh, which retweets tweets from relevant sources, right? The uh, trusted, authoritative, relevant sources in Twitter so that your tweets are combined with those relevant trusted authoritative tweets so that you draw authority from those and it goes into a tiered network for just your tweets. So, so, so that's what that is. And that's why we charge extra because you, you get a, a persona network, right? A tiered persona network for your tweets and additional tweets to bring back, uh, back all of that rele relevance to your website, to your project, to wherever it is that you're sending people when you tweet because your tweet will contain links It'll contain information. It's going to contain, I don't know, videos, maps, whatever it is that you choose to tweet out. Uh, uh, and that that's how you would use that. There you go. George, Gordon's up. What's up, Gordon? He says, hey, guys, I have no questions for today. Oh, wow. That's a rarity, Gordon. <laughs> he says, even though it's a little belated, I just wanted to wish you much happiness, good health, and continued success and prosperity for 2020 and beyond. And also to, again, declare a heartfelt thank you for helping your customers by sharing your knowledge with us on these hump days. You are the best. That would be a good one for the testimonials, guys. Uh, thanks, Gordon. We always appreciate you coming in and ask, participating. You've been a member or a, uh, in the audience for many years, part a participant for many years, I should say. So thank you for that. We always appreciate you as well. And here yep. comes another superstar, Mohammed. What's up, Mohammed? Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Who said thank you? Oh, Gord. Uh, that was Hernan to Gordon. Yep. Uh, and Mohammed, he's another superstar he's been in and out of the mastermind but he's growing which is awesome uh so what's up mom and he says hey guys when it comes to the title tags for a crowded industry do i have to do i have to have a unique one my car dealer client is in a big city and all the page one companies seem to have some variations of new cars in city or new that uh new comma used cars in city usually i try to make my title tag stand out but in this case should i just copy what the competition is doing is my focus on uniqueness even justified I don't remember learning it. Okay, I'm going to give you my opinion on this, and then I'm sure that there's probably some differences uh, from some of the other guys. Um, when it comes to title tags, unless it's a blog post, if it's a if it's a page where you know for lead generation, I typically I just use the keyword. Whatever the primary keyword is that I'm trying to target for that page becomes my at least the first part of the title tag. I might include a phone number in the title tag as well as the brand, right? Or I, all, I typically do, but the first part of the title tag is going to be just that primary keyword, not a modification of it. It's just the primary keyword. Then I'll have the phone number, then the brand or something, some, some similar variation of that. Uh, but it's always just the primary keyword where I try to have try to stand out is in the meta description, right? And that's where I try to write, you know, I do a lot of Google ads now. And so I have the benefit of split testing a lot of headlines and descriptions. Um, and because of that, I, I, t I tend to try to write my video or excuse me, my meta descriptions as ad copy. So it's compelling. So that's what I try to do to stand out. And the reason why I say that is because I want that, that, SE, that keyword in the SEO title is a significant ranking factor for a piece of content, at least in my experience. And I've, I've kept at that process for many years now. So I always want that primary keyword as the title tag, the, the first part of the title tag too. And then I'll use the ad copy or excuse me, the meta description as I'll, I'll, I'll optimize that like it's ad copy to try to entice a click. Um, and that's, that's typically how I do it, but I'm sure some of the other guys have some other um, input to put on this. So just to clarify, Mohammed. I would use, I would kind of do what my opinion would be to do what your, the competitors are doing um, when it comes to the title tag, but then try to make your meta description stand out as much as possible. And one of the ways to do that, which maybe Marco can touch on this a little bit more uh, if he doesn't get mad at me for, for saying this is to include jump links because they can get pulled into the meta description. Remember, if you have a piece of content and you have like a table of contents, you have jump links within the content those can get, actually get pulled into the meta description. So it extends your SERP space, right? The real estate that you take up on the space. Uh, and plus it also draws the eyes to it because it's got a blue clickable link right from within the meta description. 
So those are also things that you can do to help it kind of stand out. Marco, what say you? Well, un understanding how the algorithm is working right now, how it was tweaked, how they're trying to cater to uh, NLP and uh, neural, N-E-U-R-A-L, neural matching. This is, this is when you really have to focus on, on, on why brands are becoming more and more important as we go into the semantic web. Yeah, you could do it like that. You could do it, uh, to just focus on, on the keyword. Like you said, include the brand and uh, uh, the, the exact match keyword, but the, the broad match, right? So if, you, so if, you, if you're selling new cars and, and your domain it has new cars, newcars.com, so you can't go newcars.com, new cars for sale. You see, it, it becomes nearly impossible to, to avoid uh, over-optimizing everything on your website. Instead of if you had focused on your brand, which is usually a name, probably a family name, right? And plus, and then the car maker, and then the, the location, model. You might want to include the model if it's a post, or whatever it is. However it is that you're trying to frame this, it would be a whole lot easier if you concentrated on the brand. And then once you're focusing on the brand, to do as much as you can for the entity of that brand around the web so, so that now you're setting yourself up uh, two ways. The way that Bradley said, it becomes unique. Your description it is in fact your ad copy because you're in front, in front of a, a user and that user is gonna look at these results and the one that catches the eye is the one that's gonna get the click or the one, you know, it's just sometimes that they go, to, they go to that first one. There's a lot of people that will go multiples and then there's a lot of people where, where you get that, that uh, uh, bold right? Those, those descriptions and, and those titles in bold, and, and maybe that'll catch their eye. This is why it's so, it's so important to have that, that keyword that you're focusing on. But if you're focusing on brand, you're not going to run into over-optimization issues. So you have two things. You're taking care of that ad copy. You're taking care of that title and that description. And you're taking care of your entity so, so that in every way possible, you just differentiated yourself from everyone else in the industry that's doing the same damn thing. And so now you're giving the bot a reason to choose your entity over the others when it went, when, all right, I don't know how deep I can get into this. Mohammed, go, go look at the, the, the charity webinars because I went deep into this and, and into the entity, into the fact that, that all do, Google is doing is it's comparing, it's comparing entities. It's in a relational database and it relates all of the entities to one another and all of the, uh, whatever vectors it has for that entity, vectors are simply numbers, right? Zero to eight. And so whatever it has in its, in its, in its system, in its servers, when it's looking for the entities, which one matches the entity the best or, or what it thinks the, the optimal entity is, if yours is the closest to that, it's going to draw more attention from the bot. It's going to draw more love. That's why our, our, our ad ID pages work so fucking well, because we're just feeding the bot all of the information about our entity and we do it over and over and over again. We loop it, we scoop it, and it has no choice but to do what we want it to do. That's why I'm, I'm surprised that he's not back in our mastermind already asking not only these questions, but going deeper into this, because we go a whole lot deeper about the entity and, and all of the different things that you can do to trap that bot in there and just to, to, to set yourself completely apart from everybody else. Uh, you know, it, it's part of our, our SEO power shield and it's part of, of what I'm calling worryless SEO. We just don't worry about updates. It doesn't matter. We don't care what Google does because we're already optimized for Google, even though Google says you can't optimize for, for natural language processing and AI. Yeah. And I call that bullshit. Yeah. I love that. You can't optimize for the new updates. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You thinking you, that the people that say that just don't have a Marco on their team. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, Troy's up. He says, uh, "Hello, I have a client's plumbing GMB. Since he wasn't ranking in the three pack, he added the physical location of the shop, which is also the NAP on his website, to the Google My Business, as well as leaving the service areas listed or already listed. The business services in home and not at shop location, right? It's a service area business, meaning the business services customers at their location, not at the business's location. Makes sense. It's a service area business. How is this going to hurt any listings or rankings? 
Should the address be taken off? Yes, it should. And the reason why is because it's clearly stated in Google's terms, Google My Business Terms of Service that states if you are a service area business, you should not publish your address. There are some exceptions to that, um, which sometimes, by the way, I, you know, there, there is some algorithmic or automated suspensions that can occur from that. So I'm surprised. Uh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not surprised that I'm kind of surprised that it didn't happen already because um, I, I have heard of people adding the physical location for a service area business and it auto suspending it. So if you didn't get hit with that, that's a good thing. I would go in and remove that service area uh, or excuse me, the physical location from being published. And, and that's because the Google My Business terms of service state that if it's a service area business, you're not supposed to publish the address. There can be some exceptions for that such as, for example, and I've used this example in the past, like a kitchen, uh, a, remod a kitchen remodeling company may have a showroom, right? Kitchen remodeling happens at the customer location, not at the business location. However, they may have a showroom where people can come in and see, you know, kind of mock kitchen designs and things like that. So that's, a, that's an exception where, and I've actually had a client that uh, we had left the service, you know, it was a service area business, but we had left the published um, physical location because they had a showroom and uh, it got suspended and we had to contact Google My Business support and, you know, state our, our case, which was that they had a showroom uh, and they reinstated it. It was fine. It was fine. It was, it was just a matter of, you know, going through proper channels, but it, it got reinstated. It was fine. But I just wanted to point that out. It's, it, it, I would not publish the address for service area businesses unless it's one of those uh, rare exceptions. Okay. And that's because they told you not to do that. Um, and, and I've seen it firsthand get suspended because of it. Okay. Any comments on that, guys? No, I agree. It's a terms of service violation. You can get yourself in a lot of trouble for that. Yeah. So here's another one uh, from Troy. And this is a great question. He says, another one, field techs, plumbing, uh, the plumbing techs, taking pics out at service area jobs will upload directly to GMB, an Instagram account, since taken by phone and geotagged to that residence location. So geotagged from where they took the photo, right? So it's got the GPS data embedded in the, the imprinted on, impressed upon the, the image, okay, as part of the metadata. So uh, is this the best way or should all pics be geotagged with NAP and then uploaded to GMB? No, because now you got conflicting data, right? If you're, if you take a photo that was taken on location at a customer location for service area business, and then you wait to upload it till after you've geotagged it with additional NAP data, doesn't that cause conflicting geodata on that one image, right? How can that image been taken in two different locations at the same time? It can't be, right? So no, don't do that. The, the benefit that you're going to gain from taking photos on location and uploading using the GMB app, by the way, uh, is that it uploads that geodata from, and it starts to paint a picture, right? It starts to prove to Google that you, that that service area is indeed where you're, you're, you're um, conducting business, right? If that makes sense. And so that's one of the ways that we talk about in local GMB pro. Um, and that's about as far as I'm going to talk about it, but, and how to expand a map area footprint, if that makes sense. And I don't mean footprint in a bad sense. I mean, in a good sense in how you can expand your maps listing exposure to areas outside of your immediate proximity, right? If that makes sense. It, again, remember over the last year, there's been two occasions that I'm aware of where Google has tightened that proximity part of the algorithm, the proximity filter, they've, they've narrowed it. It's happened two times now in the last year. Uh, one within like the last three months or so, two or three months. So the proximity issue is getting harder and harder to overcome, but that is still the way to overcome it is by uploading photos from that are taken from mobile devices in the service area. So out across the areas. And also as Marcos teaches, uh, you know, not just the metadata that is, is imprinted in the, um, the meta, you know, the, the geodata that's imprinted in the metadata of the, of the images by uploading them, but also by taking images of known landmarks and things like that, that can be identified by Google through Google street view and things like that, Google earth and all of that, that will also prove that it's within the service area. So those are two different ways that you benefit from that. Not by, you know, we talk about geotagging photos using stuff like geosetter or whatever, when you don't have somebody in the field actually uploading 
original photos that were taken on location, right? We only use the geotagging softwares to tag photos when as, as a second, um, you know, next best option, as a second option when we don't have that first option um, implemented. So anyways, Marco, I know you want to comment on that. Yeah, it, it defeats the purpose. If, if you tag them from wherever the location is, let's say where, where you work is different from the location where, wherever the job is. It would just right. say a contractor goes out to a house uh, 10 miles away, does the job, takes the pictures, uploads them there, and then Google ha has all that information versus going there, getting the pictures, giving them to you, then you re-tag re them. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't understand that why, why you, it, the, the whole purpose of this is you're giving Google information from the place that you want to become relevant or, or related to your business. So if, if it's 10 miles away, if it's 20 miles away, whatever, whatever it is, you want to, you, you want to make that relevant to you and to your business. And the way that you do that is by taking the pictures there and uploading them there. If you upload them uh, some other place, then it's going to change the data. And that defeats the purpose of taking them at the location. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really cool. Cause I, uh, you know, you can, I mean, you can test this guys. You can take a photo from your phone and upload it or, you know, if you've got Google photos on your phone uh, so that it automatically backs them up to Google photos, I do. Um, I've got an Android phone. So if you take a photo out, you know, somewhere and then you go look at the, the metadata, you, it'll show you the coordinates of where it was taken. Like you, it'll show you like a little Google map with a pin where, where it was taken. If you look at the, the little eye in the circle, so like the info, it'll show you like the data that it sees from the image. So it's pretty cool. It does that with uh, videos too, by the way. So it's, you know, it's very, very powerful. And that's, it, it, that's that's how you can kind of create a map for Google to understand like like a, a, when I say a map like a service area by over time you consistently upload images that are um, you know geotagged from where they were taken uploaded through the GMB app especially um, then that you know you can start to kind of train the bot to understand or recognize where your service area truly is. It's not just claiming it, stating it in the GMB, but now you're proving to the bot that you indeed are servicing those areas because you're uploading photos that are proof, right, with the geodata. So it's a great question though. Okay, uh, next question is hello there. Thank you for answering our questions. My question is what is the best way to index links in general and drive stacks in particular nowadays? Uh, MGYB.co, our store. We have a link indexing service over there that is, works really, really well. It's like 10 bucks for 2,500 links or something like that. It's ridiculous. Um, so, you know, go buy an embed gig or excuse me, an uh, a indexing gig over there and submit them that way. That's one way to do it. Um, how else could we do it, Marco? I, I don't do it any other way. So I can't say go do it some other way. I get my links, links indexed by, by Daddy. If I'm looking, if I'm testing, I might try different things. So, so maybe when we do the heavy hitter club, we can show people the different ways that you can index links. But why am I going to do all that work when it's not right. necessary? I could just go tell Daddy I need these links, links indexed. And then he's going to take them. He's going to get about 60% or more indexed. And since he does multiple indexing runs, then, they, then they, they index over a period of time rather than all at once. We had that question, I think, in the mastermind. So I want to make that clear to people that they don't have to worry about, I don't know, 15, 20,000 links uh, showing up all of a sudden in their link profile. That's not how it works. He does yeah. it over a period of time so that they index 60% plus, And then you have, you, you have the, the, this, this great uh, link profile and, and index links. And you can push even more power if you build tiered link building to those index links. And again, Dadia can take care of all that. Sweet. Uh, Nathan says, just letting you know that some of the links in battle plans still point to service space links that don't work. Well, thanks, Nathan. Appreciate that. Um, as I mentioned the last time, I think you made a comment about the battle plan. Uh, that's on the block for, that's on the to-do list for after 2X your agency training is done, that will be updated. One thing at a time, my man. So thank you, though. Uh, let's see what's next. Troy says, I'll keep it going. Okay, Troy, yeah, might as well. <laughs> um, Troy said, because there's no other questions, guys. And by the way, if we run out of questions, we wrap it up early. So it's up to you guys. You got questions, ask them. If there's only a handful of you here, feel free, okay? 
because otherwise we'll wrap it up early. I'm perfectly good with going back to finishing the training for two extra agency today. <laughs> I've got a lot left to do. Uh, Troy says, I'll keep it going. Page builders are trending in the IM world this week. Oh, oh are they? Um, like what type of page builders? HTML, fast loading pages, or still WordPress? Client needs redesign, and I'm pondering page builder because so much quicker to build. Google more receptive to HTML now since they weren't a few years ago. Um, so when you say page, oh, that's, order, that's I, a, hang on, no, let, let me let me ch go after that because no, Google is not now more receptive to, to H, HTML than before. They've always been very receptive yeah. to, H, to HTML. Agreed. The thing is that WordPress is so popular that Google does, get, and and I don't care what they say, you know, they'll tell you no, but they do give uh, WordPress a, uh, it, it's a little bit of, of, of a boost, not, not much, but it's just so damn popular. But HTML has always worked really well because of how fast it is. It's, 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 it's just super fast and, and uh, Google really likes that. Uh, I, I've worked with HTML forever, right? For about 17, 18 years, well, almost 17 years that I've been doing this and it, it never stopped working. So let's, let's make that clear. Or uh, Google isn't any more receptive to HTML now than it was before. Yeah, and I, I really like HTML. Um creating pages in HTML because it, it does, they load super quick. Um, it's not that hard to, to, it's just when you have to have dynamic stuff and, you know, database and all that. I like, I'm not, I'm not an HTML owner and I just use uh, uh, notepad plus plus as an HTML editor. And, uh, but I like using HTML pages cause they're quick loading and that kind of stuff. So um, anyways, uh, page builders are trending HTML fast loading client needs redesign. So I don't know really if that, what the question is there. Um, you know, it's up to you. Um, WordPress still works. I, you know, I'm not crazy about WordPress. The only reason why I still use WordPress is because it's, it is, you know, like I know it uh, and it makes it easy for blogs and things like that. But I also don't like WordPress because of how many fucking updates there are all the time. Isn't that ridiculous? It's just stupid. It's just stupid. And when you have so many damn sites that you manage, it just, you know, it, it's just a pain in the ass. And even if you use something like main WP or whatever, there always ends up being issues. And every time there's an update, you know, one or two sites out of the dozens and dozens that you manage end up having some sort of conflict. And, you know, it's just a pain in the balls. That's why I try to run when I do run, uh, WordPress sites, I try to run them as light as possible, right? So the, like as little, as few plugins as possible and that kind of stuff, because it's just a nightmare dealing with on a, on a regular basis. So, um, you know, pick and choose whatever, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Uh, you know, I still would build a, a new client site on WordPress just because of the ease with which I could build it um, and then add content and all that kind of stuff. But I do like HTML for the various reasons that I just mentioned. Now, de depending on how proficient he is with HTML, you can build a, a WordPress uh, hybrid with mm -hmm. H HTML, right? And you can type HTML pages to your WordPress. That's not a problem. Yeah. It, it just depends. It depends on, on, on how far you want to go with it. But, but I can tell you right now that you can rank WordPress, HTML, uh, uh, literally just, just about anything on the web if you work the entity, the guy says, if you're not doing entity-based SEO right now, if you just, oh, if you're worried about which builder you're going to use rather than how you're going to set up your ent entity, you're starting off on the wrong foot. Yeah, I agree. Ent entity-based SEO. It's for the semantic web is what the bot is looking at. If you're not doing that, you're fucking it up. Nicely said. Uh, Nathan says, Troy, take the photos via the GMB app on the iPhone. Google loves those photos and you will get more eyeballs on your GMB. Yeah, it doesn't have to be the app on the iPhone. It could be on your Android too. Just the GMB app, period. Right? That's that's the point. Upload the... By the way, you know, you can, you can give your field techs access as like a communications manager or whatever they call it uh, so that they can upload directly to the GMB as a contributor, right? Which means they could not only upload photos, but they could also post GMB posts from through the GMB app directly to your GMB profile for the business. However, you can also upload photos and still get the benefit as a guest. Like, so in other words, a guest uploaded photo. So even if your techs, the field technicians didn't have manager access to the GMB, they could still take photos and upload them with the geo tag data, right? Metadata directly to the GMB as guest photos user generated photos right and it still has the same benefit 
The only difference is you don't get to add, create a post from it with a call to action and squeeze keywords in and such. But the, the image SEO still um, has an effect even as a guest uh, as a guest upload, right? A user user upload as opposed to a manager upload. Okay. Uh, Troy says, thanks, gents. Always great help. Been a few weeks and just saw the pricing on the 2X your agency. <laughs> Agree, Bradley, you are nuts. Going to sign sign now before your sanity comes back. Yeah, I, yeah Troy, if you, you think I'm nuts. I think I'm nuts because I'm the one spending all this time doing all the <laughs> videos and the, oh, it's a lot of fucking time. I'll tell you that a lot of time. And I got nine more weeks to go. So anyways, um, next question. I just landed a big client who has four offices in different cities near each other, near each other, excuse me. And my main objective is to generate more calls from their GMB pages. So I figure this is where I can show the biggest and fastest results. I was thinking about doing a big SEO shield for the brand first and add local SEO shields for the specific GMB pages. Any better idea? Um, well, yeah, I mean, you really, you can do it all underneath the one branded shield is what you, that's, I think I'm pretty sure Marco is going to suggest that. And I'm going to let Marco take over this one. I would, I would assume that you can push all of that through the primary SEO shield, which would be your drive stack and all of that. And then you can create location-based optimized folders within the stack um, instead of having these different uh, stacks and all of that, you can do it all under one and you actually get more power out of it that way than having different stacks, at least through my experience. Marco, this one is definitely yours. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're thinking brand. I was supposed to be thinking brand. We should be thinking brand. If we don't, I mean, right now, like what I'm, what I'm recommending to everyone is think of, of, of a catchy name because you know, women's shoes, uh, whatever, women's shoes, Chicago, that's not a brand. That's a keyword, right? New women, just whatever. Those are not brand. Think of brands. Think of a name that you want for your company, that that that's that's catchy, and that that's going to uh, to, to last, right? It's going to it's going to stand the, the, the test of time. Why? Because if 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 you hit that one, if you got that, if you got that unicorn, if you got that one, that 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 for whatever reason, becomes the the keyword for the niche. Then, then that that that's an ATM. That's a twenty-four hour, uh, uh, three sixty-five ATM. It's gonna pour money in your pocket and your client. Hopefully, it's your idea. But that's the way you should all be looking at project. Even if you have to do local, which is a brand plus location plus keyword association, you're looking at the brand always. So even if it's different cities, there there, there should be one main office, right? McDonald's. You, they, they, they differentiate between McDonald's Corporation. And, and then the, the franchises and the franchisees and, and then everything else that, that McDonald's does. It, it, it's, not, it's not one McDonald's in, in one place and then another one in, uh, orphaned in another place or, or, or whatever. No, it's, it's all one big brand. Look at how the big boys take on the internet. Look at how they set it all up. Look at how they, uh, they set up the franchise model or the multiple city, multiple office model and do the do that they do. Because if you don't, you're going to be left behind. Right now, if, if, you, if you start now and, and you're starting it off right and you're working just brand, just from, from, from that aspect, then you're going to know that everything that you do needs to relate to that brand and to everything that's under that brand. You claim your footprint, right? You go and claim all your social profiles. You go and you, everything, that, that you, excuse me, everything that you set up should be with you looking to create that brand plus keyword association. Not everyone is, and I, and I talked about this during the charity webinars, not all of you will be able to, to make your project the next Amazon or the next Google or the next whatever, but you should be working as if that's going to happen. And the way that we can push power right now, the way that we do things at Semantic Mastery, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a wide open field. It, it, it's even, it's an even playing field. So that, I mean, we, we saw the test case in, in, uh, in our mastermind where, where Dedia went after Amazon and he's fighting Amazon, Walmart, you name it, in the e-commerce space. And, and, and he's carved his niche. He's, he's yeah. there. And, and the client is happier than a pig in shit. It's impressive. I mean, in such a short period of time uh, to 
like with e-com to take on Walmart and Amazon and be competitive with them in, in such a short period of time. It's absolutely incredible. It's impressive. Um, so anyways, there you go. Uh, and yeah, you know, what's interesting guys in the two X your agency training, the double your agency training, um, you know, the, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm finishing, I should finish today, week three's training. And it's all about the, the first four weeks is about two X your pipeline. It's about increasing, filling your pipeline full of leads prospects so that you can never have to worry about revenue again for your agency. You can not only sell more clients, close more clients, generate more revenue, but you can also pick cherry pick the best ones because the problem is if you only got 10 leads coming in your business, you know, you, you, you are uh, desperate to try to close as many of those 10 as possible. And it comes across in ev everything that you say, your actions, your tone of voice, everything, it comes across as desperate because you need the revenue and you only got 10 prospects to, 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 to talk to. If you had a hundred prospects to talk to, it'd be a completely different psychology. So anyways, I talked, the reason I brought that up is because the whole first four weeks is about building your brand. Exactly what Marco is talking about, but not, there is an SEO benefit to it, but I'm not talking about building your brand in SEO terms. There is a, a, a portion of that where I talk about it, but most of it is about building your brand so that you become synonymous with whatever product or service it is that you're trying to promote. So for example, you know, I talk about niching down. That's how I prefer to do it. I think it's much easier to scale an agency that way. So like associating your primary keyword, which may be tree service SEO, or like for me, for example, or tree service marketing or tree service lead generation, whatever it is with, with the brand name. And it's about building that brand and that association. And so the whole first four weeks is about really building your own brand first. That's, that's super important because now that's how you start. Like Mar Marco said, once you become, once the association has been generated, not just within Google, but also within other, within, you know, prospects, minds, custom, potential audience, target minds. Um, that's like an ATM. It's a 24 hour machine, uh, you know, cash machine. That's just going to constantly deliver money. And that's what, that's where you want to be for your own agency, as well as for your clients. You want to be able to reproduce that, duplicate that for your clients and have, and help them become the branded verb. You know what I mean? Like you, you want them to be the ones that are associated with their product or service in their local area. And the way that you do that is through what Marco calls entity SEO. It's about building that brand. And that's, that's incredibly, I mean, that's absolutely true. That's guys, it's about branding. That's you want, you want to kill it in SEO, build the fucking brand period. Like <laughs> That's just the way it is now. And uh, it's only going to continue to go further in that direction, in my opinion. So. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's not just an opinion. It's what Google is telling you. I mean, everything that they've come out with and I'm, I'm just seeing this all over with people that just, they have no clue. And it's all about entity. All of these people that, that that saw drops in whatever they were doing is because their their entity wasn't right. And those who benefited or didn't see any changes are because they're doing things right. And, and it, to me, it's funny because the only way that we find out about updates is like when people come in in Hump Day or in our groups and tell us, "You guys see that update?" And we're like, "No, no." But let me go yeah. look and, and see and see what it's about. I know what it's about. I saw what it's about. Google tells you. What is about Google tells you, I mean, almost to to the letter what they want. And then John Mueller will go and tell you the opposite so that you don't know what to do. So you got to you got to go sift through all of that to get the right information, because you got a lot of people that are just uh, uh, spreading the Google word without understanding what it is that they're saying, without even understanding what it is that John Mueller is saying, because a lot of times what John Mueller says and what he means are two totally different things. Don't pay attention to John Mueller. If you don't want to believe Marco, then don't believe Marco. Go and test and see for yourself whether what I'm telling you, entity-based SEO, whether that's what's working right now. And I guarantee you that you're going to get results. If you do the things right, set up your SEO shield and then do the things that, that, that are in the battle plan that we recommend for your entity. I, and it, it's just a done deal. It, it, it's so simple, it's ridiculous. And you can go up against anyone. I'm telling you right now, that you can take on anyone in the internet space and win. I think uh, Hernan was going to contribute. Absolutely. Yeah, I was about to say on a different branding perspective, uh, branding from the perspective of creating a brand to attract customers, um, not from the SEO perspective. That is something that I'll be contributing as well uh, with, you know, 
shortly to uh, to XA, which is going to be a, a branding course for or an inbound prospecting course for um, digital agency owners. So basically, how do you use on my case, which is my wheelhouse, which is going to be Facebook? How do you uh, leverage Facebook and Facebook ads? Not the organic stuff. Not the fact that you need to post a thousand times a day and be glued to your phone and you know right. look like a teenager. Not not we're not talking about that, right? We're talking about like doing real business. We're talking about re- doing real business, not influencer type stuff, but real stuff, because you also need to build and run your business, right? So, so you know, my idea is to show you real quick how you can build a brand around yourself so that you can uh, pipe those leads into whatever your sales process is, whether it is like talking to you or if you have a salesperson or a, a call center, whatever that is. But I'm going to show with you guys how to do that in 2XA that's going to be available, you know, next next week for sure. So it's going to be in 2XA agency as well. So There you go. Yeah, and I, I would just add to, to, to people that – when you're building your brand, when you're talking about your brand, it's, it's not something that you separate from your SEO brand. It's right. all your brand. Your brand is, is how you're going to do business. It's gonna, it's gonna be your calling card on, on the web. And you can't call yourself Joe Schmo from Kokomo anymore and, and expect to go up again when Google is benefiting brands. And so, so again, if you're not working towards that brand, towards becoming the, the, the keyword for the niche, right? Like you said, to becoming the verb in your niche, then you're not doing it, right? You, 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 you forget, I mean, forget it. You're going to have to do so much work, so much work to, 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 make, it, to make it right that it, it, you, you may as well just start doing it right, like right from the beginning. Yeah. Work on that brand. Think of that brand. Work with your client on that brand. When they tell you, well, I want the keyword in the city. No. That's not how. That's not the way that you should do things. You should think about your business and how it is that you want to present yourself to the customer, to the client, to people on the web. How do you want your your your, your brand to appear to the people who are looking for uh, for your products and services or whatever it is that you're selling? Yeah. Anyways, that's um, you know again, guys. This what, what's great about this is remember you, you're hearing from uh, multiple agency owners here too that. And we all have, you know, we all understand the, the importance of that whole branding thing. There's the SEO aspect of it, but it's all one and the same now. You shouldn't separate the two, right? Right, right. Building the brand and SEOing the brand is one and the same. <laughs> and, and, and so, again, it's, um, it's good to hear an opinion from Marco and from Hernan and from myself, you know, and be able to hear it from, we each, we each have our own successful agencies beyond what we do here at Semantic Mastery. So that's, it's good. It's good to know that you know we're we're speaking from experience, right? This isn't just theory. So, all right. Fitz says, "Good day, uh, good day, guys. Thanks for this forum. I noticed that three of my sites show in the search console are going up and down together. Why do you, you guess this is happening? They are in different states. Honestly, I have no idea. Um, I mean, there's there could be a ton of variables there that you know questions I could have about that Fitz that we're obviously not going to be able to get to the bottom of right now. Um, I can't imagine what would cause something like that unless they were all all three sites were hosted on the same host uh, and there's some sort of hosting issue. I don't know how, what the connection there would be. It could just be a coincidence. It's unlikely, but there's gotta be some, I, I don't know. Is there any of you guys have any speculation on any of that? Not really enough mm. information there to go on, but. No, no, because we'd have to go and look at each one specifically yeah. and see how, the, how they're related, whether they're related, why Google created that, that relationship. Well, if Google created the, the relationship, why? So there's a lot of things that we have to look at. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's something that would have to be investigated Fitz. Um, come join the mastermind and you can submit that to one of our mastermind webinars <laughs> and we'll be happy to audit it and look into it. Uh, Muhammad, what's up buddy? He says, Hey guys, how does responding to reviews and GMB help things? Is it only good because it's activity in GMB? I have a client who's avoiding responding to negative GMB reviews and I'm prodding him to do so both for activity and reputation purposes. Um, okay. I think there's, look, we already know we can rank without reviews with none, right? So reviews can, can be a factor, but they're not necessary or critical, right? Um, so in my experience, the reason why I suggest responding to reviews, both positive and negative, I tell all my clients to respond to reviews, positive and negative for two reasons. Number one, it's additional activity. Number two, it shows to the your to, to users to people that are that end up 
seeing your brand, um, that you're engaged with your customers, right? Or that the, the brand is engaging with the, their customers. And number three, because it gives that, gives you the opportunity to now inject additional keywords and location terms, right? location uh, modifiers into a response. Because a lot of the time, I think about most reviews that customers leave don't have any keywords in them whatsoever or location details, right? A lot of them are just saying, hey, it was awesome. Thanks guys. I mean, it might have like, you know, hey, they called these guys to come remove a tree and they did a really good job. We really, you know, clean up the yard afterwards. It was great. I'll call them again. Highly recommend it. Blah. Other than saying remove a tree, there's no other indication there as to what has been done. They're just saying they, they did a great job, which is great. But what I like to do is have, you know, go in and then reply to that and say, you know, thank you for your kind words. It was a pleasure perform, you know, uh, handling that tree removal job for you in Fairfax. Uh, you know, we, we encourage you to contact us the next time you have some tree care work, you know, or tree care needs or something, right? So now you've squeezed in multiple keywords as well as a location modifier. So it's, that's why I like to do that. And I, I have all of my clients, um, you know, what I'll do is uh, during monthly reports, when I send out monthly reports, I, I have my VA always take screenshots of GMB um, insights and stuff like that. And we'll take a look at one of the things that we look at is the reviews to see if any new reviews have been posted in the last month. And if, if, if so, have they been responded to? Because if not, then when I send the monthly reports to my clients, I, I mention that in the commentary in the, in the email that I send my clients say, Hey, you know, I noticed that you got two new reviews this month that hadn't been replied to. Here's the links directly to them. Please go reply. And, uh, and I send that to them. And again, it's, and, and I've trained all of my clients to do exactly what I mentioned, which was to squeeze in a keyword and or location modifier or a couple keywords if they can, and not a spammy way, but in a very conversational way. But again, it's not necessary. I think it's, I think it's important to do it. It is something that will move the needle, but it's not critical. Um, what, do you, what do you guys think? Any comments on that? Yeah, definitely, man, because people look at reviews the wrong way. People look at, okay, I should have all five-star reviews, and that's all I need to pay attention to, and I don't need to do anything else. But the, re the reviews and responding to reviews, well, you're using the voice of your brand to talk to your customers. Again, we, we go back to brand, man. This is your this is this is your voice, right? The, the voice of your brand reaching out to this dissatisfied customer because they came to you with a with, with pain. They came to you with a problem and you did not solve the problem. You didn't take care of the pain. So now there's a, there's a problem that not only did you did you not take care of that, but they have a problem with you and with your brand. So this is this is the, the perfect time to go in there and say, hey, look, yeah, we fucked up. You're not going to say it in these words, but this is what I tell this is what I tell them, the, the people when, when I'm in a consultation. And they ask me about reviews. You go tell the person that you fucked up. And then you go tell them, how can we make it right for you? Help us make it right for you so, so that now you create a dialogue with this person. And then what that does is it makes your brand stand out from the rest. In that, in that not only did you respond, but you offered to make it right. And now you're in, you're, in, you're in open dialogue with this person who gave you a bad review. And you're looking to make it right. You know how that makes you look? It makes you look like you have the best customer service yeah. in the industry. It put, it actually, it, it, it's actually a, a place where you can shine, even though the review started out being bad, just by, just by uh, talking to the customer and offering, look, let me make it right for you. How can we make it right? How can we help you? And uh, sometimes they just, no, fuck off. I don't need you anymore. Right. But then that makes them look shitty because you're, you're, you're being open, you're being honest, and you're, you're willing to help and you're willing to make it right. So, so that puts it back on them instead of it all being on you, leaving that negative review just without response. You know, chirp, chirp, chirp. Make, it, it makes you look really bad. And, and in rare occasions, you can turn a negative uh, bad review, what initially was a bad review, into a positive and end up turning that customer into a brand advocate. Exactly. Uh, it, it's a rare occasion that that happens. But if you bend over backwards to make something right that was – a fuck up on your part or not, you know, whatever. But if you bend over to make it right, then sometimes you can turn that customer into, um, you know, an ambassador for the company because they'll go out and, you know, sing praises uh, about your business and recommend you to friends and family and such because they had what started off as a bad experience, but turned into a good one. Okay. And so just keep that in mind. Remember guys, think of, 
setbacks is, you know, Napoleon Hill, um, I think it was Dale Carnegie that actually said it, but Napoleon Hill was the one that published it and, you know, really made it famous. Um, the quote, which was, for every adversity, there's a seed of equal or greater benefit, right? And so if you think about that, and, and it's funny, I'm listening to an audiobook right now that I'm really enjoying. I'm only in chapter two, but it's called Black Box Thinking. And it's all about how, you know, you if you take your failures and analyze them the way the airline industries do with the black box, right? They, they, they always admit, they don't ever try to cover up mistakes or hide mistakes or try to downplay mistakes. They take all mistakes head on and they analyze the data and make it more, make it publicly available for everybody so that they can improve processes and improve how flights, you know, are handled and things like that. And, and so anyways, I, I, it's just an analogy to say, hit a, hit a challenge head on. And that'll make you stand out and in, figure out a way to learn from that, to improve processes so that it doesn't happen again. It will make it a stronger business, stronger brand, strong, stronger company. Um, and so again, just think about it that way. You know, I, I love that statement. I say it to myself all the time when I run into a challenge, something that, you know, I, or if, if I mess up, you know, I, I fail, you know, have some sort of failure or something, uh, you know, for every, for every adversity, there's a seed of equal or greater benefit. So just remember that. Just look for the way to improve upon a process when you've been uh, notified of, of, a, of, a, of a setback or, you know, an insufficiency or whatever. Does that make sense? So anyways, all this is covered in 2X Your Agency, guys. You should uh, join it. And uh, Muhammad says, P.S. My situation is slowly improving and I will take my stable place back in the mastermind soon. Yes, you're always welcome, Muhammad. The door is always open to you. Austin says, do you have multiple, if you have multiple keywords just floating around page two, what would you think the problem may be? Let's say the on page is tight. Uh, again, that's kind of a loaded question in that it could be a number of things. I, I could speculate on a, you know 18 different things that it could be. What I would recommend doing, if you, if you say your on page is tight, let's just assume that it is, and you've got keywords that are floating on page two, I'd drive some damn tr relevant traffic to those pages because that is my go-to thing. When, when you've done other uh, on page and you've done some off page stuff and you're still struggling to get the results that you want, I found art, <laughs> activity, relevance, trust, and authority. If you can provide engagement activity to that, you will see a, a significant movement, right? It'll definitely move the needle. And so what I would do is buy some traffic, some relevant traffic from Google, to those pages and see what happens. That's what I would do. What, any suggestions on that, Marco? No, not without knowing the uh, what off page he's done, but it could, it could be that the competition is keeping him from, from page one, right? It could be that, that he hasn't pushed enough power to those to go from page two to, to page one. So I don't know enough to, to give an opinion, but absolutely activity relevance, trust and authority is all you need when you're, when you're sitting there on page two, ready to jump in, into page one. Yeah but you really haven't made it yet. If your own pages is, is right and your entity's tight, then the next step is the, is off page. What's happening off page. Yep. Yeah. And you can buy some relevant traffic uh, from YouTube, although that's more for views than for clicks. Um, you can get some clicks and it will be relevant, but you can use the display network for uh, Google ads um, for way less expensive than search ads and drive relevant traffic to your pages. And Google knows it's relevant because you set it up through your audience targeting, right? So you can set up in-market audiences, custom intent audiences, whatever, layer them. So you, you, you combine audiences to what's called layering. Um, you know, you can do that as well. But my point is now you're buying traffic to pages that from a relevant audience that it's a, it's an audience that you're, you're purchasing from Google, right? You're tapping into an, a Google audience that Google is telling you is relevant. So you're, you're, you're buying relevant traffic directly from Google. And now that's, those are relevant signals that Google is weighting higher than just some random ass traffic, if that makes sense, because it, Google understands there's already has a, a profile developed for those visitors and it's already identified them as, you know, um, a relevant audience before they even hit your page is my point. So again, those are highly weighted traffic signals. And I don't care what Google says about buying traffic from Google ads doesn't help SEO. That's just like telling you that link wheels don't work and uh, press releases don't work and guest posts don't work and all that, right? How's that working out for you guys? All right, we're about out of time. Uh, guys, I'm sorry, there's a couple good questions we're not gonna be able to get to. Um, last one, Fitz says, is Blogger a good substitute for WordPress for blogging? Not really. 
because you're so limited to what you can do with Blogger. Um, you know, self-hosted WordPress site gives you a lot of functionality. Blogger, I mean, it can be used, but you're limited in design. Well, I don't know. I've never, I've never, I've never tried to design within Blogger. Um, I've just used default themes or whatever. So I, I can't, I can't answer that for sure. Except if if it was a good substitute, it would probably be a lot more prevalent. And I, I rarely ever see any blogs on Blogger um, that have any measurable amount of traffic. Any comments on that? Yeah, I would say test it and let us know how it turns out because yeah. it's, 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 I'd have to speculate since I've never used Blogger for anything other than links back to my content. content. All right, so Clint and uh, D. Klein, I don't know if that's your name or what. Anyways, you guys, sorry I didn't get to your questions. Um, if you post them in the Facebook group, we can try to answer them over there or you can repost them until ne uh, for next week, some day hangouts and we'll get to them there. But either way, uh, we're, sorry, guys, we didn't get to you, but we are out of time. So thanks, everybody, for being here. Thank you, guys. Bye, everyone. Go get better, Hernan. Thank you. I'll try. <laughs> All right, guys. Bye, everybody. See ya. See ya.